All right, we're back here on Sportsline. A couple more notes to pass along to you before we move back into the bracket here. Uh, Middle Tennessee is mad, folks. <laughs> that game, second half, Blue Raiders are pouring it on. Like a 36 to 16 run, something like that, to start the second half. It's 77 49, Middle Tennessee, right now. Western Kentucky also leading tonight in the NIT. And then back to football. Free agency again begins tomorrow. A couple more notes for you. As we said, Deion Lewis joining Malcolm Butler. Apparently both those former Patriots coming to Tennessee. But a former Titan, or at least now former Titan, Avery Williamson expected to sign a free agent deal to play linebacker for the Jets. So those things keep coming in hot and heavy as well. Back to my bracket, though. We are filling it out right here on the air tonight. And we go to the South region, the number one overall seed, Virginia Cavaliers. Is this the year for Tony Bennett's team? Well, it's certainly not going to end in round one. Virginia beats Maryland Baltimore County. Creighton and Kansas State, 8-9 game. Interesting storyline here. You always get these in the tournament. Marcus Foster, best player for Creighton. Started his career at Kansas State for Bruce Weber. Ended up transferring out of K-State, goes to Creighton, and has a storybook career. He's now a senior, and guess who the Blue Jays face in round one? Bruce Weber and Kansas State. I think Foster is one of the best players on the floor. He's got a pretty good teammate in Justin Thomas as well. Creighton moves on. Now comes the fun part, because this top half of that bracket is stacked. Kentucky, despite winning the SEC championship, playing so well down the stretch of the season, I think you can make an argument they're playing like a top 16 team. Resume-wise, they probably are five, and that's where they're spotted. So Kentucky is a five seed against a Davidson team that John Calipari described as a mix between Tennessee and Vanderbilt with five guys on the floor at all times who can shoot threes. He seems to think it's a difficult matchup, but I don't see how that team I watched playing this weekend, I don't see how that team loses to Davidson. So I got Kentucky moving on. I also have Arizona against a good Buffalo team. I, I like Buffalo as a 13 seed, but I don't like him in this matchup. Not against Arizona. So Arizona moves on. The upset I like in the South is Loyola Chicago. Miami the sixth seed. Bruce Brown is out. He's injured. He's not going to play in the NCAA tournament. And this is a team that won 28 games this year. It is senior laden. Custer, the Missouri Valley player of the year, can really light it up from outside. I think Loyola Chicago pulls the 11 over 6 upset. Tennessee, no problems with Wright State. Just not enough offense from the Raiders to beat a team as good defensively as Tennessee is. Nevada and Texas. Nevada loses in the conference tournament but still gets in. The Martin brothers are phenomenal. Those twins are great. Texas has a lot of talent but hasn't put it together all season long. I'm taking Nevada there and I'm taking Cincinnati over Georgia State. Virginia against Creighton. Wahoos easily into the round of 16 and then maybe the game of the first weekend actually there's no maybe about it the game of the first weekend will be kentucky against arizona in boise that 5-4 game of the south region and i'll tell you what the team i watched in kentucky last weekend in st louis watched them up close and personal that looked like a team that was in the ilk of some of these other really good Calipari teams that made runs in the NCAA tournament after winning the SEC title. Kentucky can go to the Final Four. Heck, it could win it all if they really get going here. The problem is to me, Arizona looks like that team too. This team is playing really well. They've got the best player in the tournament, DeAndre Ayton. And I think they're now playing for Sean Miller because of that whole episode of the report that says he was wiretapped offering to pay DeAndre Ayton. I think this team's playing for its coach now, so I got Arizona moving on. I think Tennessee handles then. I think Tennessee handles Loyola of Chicago pretty easily. I think Cincinnati will D up Nevada. And so that sets up your Sweet 16. 
Virginia and Arizona. I love Virginia. I, I think this is a good defensive team, but I just think Arizona's better, especially with DeAndre Ayton inside. And we learned today that DeAndre Hunter of Virginia, the sixth man of the year in the ACC, broke his wrist in the ACC tournament, and it will be out for the entire NCAA tournament. So Virginia, the number one overall seed, loses a top six player, a guy who's really important for them, and to me gets in a stacked bracket with Arizona and Kentucky. So I got Arizona moving on. Tennessee, Cincinnati, man, th this is an interesting matchup in its own right. You have a veteran team in Cincinnati, Juwan Evans a guard, Gary Clark inside, versus Tennessee, young team that hasn't been to the tournament before, but is the SEC champion. I think Tennessee's got a little bit more offense. Cincinnati probably slightly better defensively. It's a toss-up matchup, but I'm going to go with the offense here. I'm going to take Tennessee to win that game and move on to the Elite Eight. I think the run ends there, though, against Arizona. Give it away a Final Four pick, but I, I think the run ends there. We will get to the West in just a second, but who do we have here on line one? I think we're going to okay. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, go ahead, caller. You are on the air. I and mean, then this is unbelievable. I respect you as a sportsman, but you know March makes fools out of everybody. No way Tennessee is going to beat Cincinnati. All right, go ahead. You, you don't think Tennessee beats Cincinnati? Uh, no way. Not close. 12 points. Uh, okay. And, and why do you think that specifically? I've seen them both play. Okay. I mean, I, I've seen them both play a bunch, too. I just don't think Cincinnati has a ton of offensive firepower. I think it's going to be a low-scoring, you know, kind of a rock fight type of game. And I just, at this point, I think I trust Tennessee to get the buckets. Now, Tennessee's probably more inconsistent and it may be prone to the 10-minute drought that a veteran team's not going to have. But I think the team that I saw play for most of the weekend in St. Louis and have watched much of this year, I think just has more offense in Cincinnati. Not going to happen. I'm sorry. All I'm right. going to watch it up. Uh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Maybe I'm wishful thinking that, too. Maybe, maybe I want Tennessee to get to the Elite Eight so we stick around in Atlanta next year, week covering the Vols. Move on to the West real quick. Xavier's going to move on in the 116 game. I got Missouri with a more healthy Michael Porter Jr. over a Florida State team that I think is vastly overrated. Ohio State, I love Mike Dom from South Dakota State, but Ohio State and Kata bates Diop. I've got them winning... Gonzaga over UNC Greensboro. Don't sleep on the Zags now. Houston, San Diego State. San Diego State's playing really well. Houston's good. I'm going to take the Aztecs, though. That's a team that hasn't been healthy all year. They've got some players back. They're good. Michigan, red hot down the stretch. Won the Big Ten tournament. They're going to beat Montana. Providence. It's going to be a 10-7 upset over Texas A&M after winning the Big East. And as much as I hate to say it, North Carolina takes care of Lipscomb, 215 game. Xavier's going to D up Missouri. Trevon Blewett and company moves on to the Sweet 16, beating the Tigers. Really interesting 5-4 game with Ohio State and Gonzaga. Gonzaga is hot. The best player on the floor is Kata bates Diop, the Big Ten Player of the Year. But I'll go with Perkins and company out there with the Zags. They're going to move on to take on Xavier. I got Michigan over the 11 seed San Diego State. And then North Carolina over Providence. I'm going to go Gonzaga with the upset over Xavier. And this is a tough one. Michigan and North Carolina. Michigan's playing really well. Mo Wagner and that team, they can really shoot it from outside. But North Carolina is one of the best three-point defensive teams in the country and the number one rebounding team in the country. A lot of guys with experience deep in the tournament from last year. So I've got North Carolina moving on to the Elite Eight. Going to take a phone call here. Let's go to line one. Let's say hello to Jeff. Jeff, what's up? It's a me again. Okay. I remember if... I might stand corrected. It seemed like it was 96 or 97. I was living in Knoxville, Tennessee, and it was the year that Arizona won the championship. 97, beat Kentucky. Tennessee lost by one 
tell him to keep him going to the Sweet 16. I think they're going to luck up and beat him this year. What do you think? Well, I mean, I, I just said, thank you, Jeff. I, I think Tennessee's getting to the Elite Eight. I think that's as far as it goes because I think Arizona probably beats them. I think if it's Virginia, I think Virginia probably beats them. But, but I think, you know, I think they've got a really good path to the Sweet 16, and then it's one game against Cincinnati, which will be fascinating. Got to take a break. When we come back, I give you my final four, and we pick a champion. So stay tuned. You're watching Sportsline here on News Channel 5 Plus.